In this series of tutorials, we'll cover how you can use ArcGIS Urban to shape the future of Hardyville while protecting the area's wildlife and natural beauty. The city of Hardyville is situated in the coastal low country of South Carolina. In the last decade alone, the population has doubled to nearly 6,000. Planned Development Districts, or PDDs, are one strategy to help accommodate this growth. With these challenges in mind, let's explore Hardyville's projects and plans by building your understanding of the user interface and developing your skills using the navigation tools. When you first open Urban, you see a public facing view that contains a representation of your city along with three key elements, projects, plans, and indicators. At the top left of the screen, there is a menu or hamburger button. This opens a table of contents. Here you can see the layers are divided into categories. We've got base map styles, including schematic and satellite, and other context layers. You can also take a screenshot for use in a report or presentation. Draw a rectangle around the area you'd like to capture. Click Save, and the image is downloaded to your computer. At the top right, there's a sign in button. Based on your user profile, Urban will pick up which language is set. ArcGIS Urban supports all the languages in ArcGIS Online. Additionally, if you're a user with the right permissions, the overview mode contains additional functions which allow you to add new plans, projects, and indicators. Now let's look at basic navigation. To pan, hold down the left mouse button, to rotate, hold down the right mouse button. To zoom to where your pointer is, double click the mouse. The scroll button zooms you in and out, and if you hold down the scroll button, you'll get a smoother experience. Shortcut keys include N to orient the view to the north, P to set the view perpendicular to the ground, J moves the view closer to the ground, and U moves the view away from the ground. Use the arrow keys to move the view left, right, up, or down. On the Projects tab, you can view all the projects within the city. You can think of projects as short-term activities on a parcel level. For example, the Hardyville Recreation Centre. Urban can facilitate small and large-scale projects from initial review to approved and permitted through each iteration of submittal. The icons that reflect the project status can also be seen in the view. Plans include a list of future zoning and redevelopment plans. While projects support the needs associated with short-term planning processes, Plans support long-term planning activities and can help you quantify and understand how proposed changes contribute to a city's planning goals. We'll look at this plan in more detail in a moment. Indicators are a tool within Urban that planners can use for visualisation of demographic or analytical data. Urban comes with pre-configured indicators out of the box, such as population change, crime and diversity. Custom indicators can also be added based on what data you want to visualise. These can offer further context for planning and development decision making. By clicking on the Type drop-down menu, you can view the different types of indicators, Capacity, Living Atlas and Custom. We'll discuss more about these indicators in an upcoming tutorial. Now let's take a look at a custom indicator for Hardyville. In Hardyville, flood hazard is a concern. Here we can see flood hazard areas in the city and where development currently exists in relation to these areas. By taking precautionary measures when projects involve areas within the floodplain, the city can ensure that the future growth is aligned with the vision and values of Hardyville. Click the back to list to return to the overview page and the X to clear the current filter. In the bottom right of the screen, you'll see the view toolbar. This has additional tools for navigation and analysis. The 2D, 3D toggle changes the view from 2D to 3D. The compass resets your view to the north, much like using the letter N. Shadows let you change the month and time of day. You can also measure distance and area and use the slice tool for cross-sectional analysis. 
We'll discuss these tools in more detail in an upcoming tutorial. That's the basics for the user interface items and navigation. Now let's dive into a Hardyville master plan. To do this, go to the plans icon and select the conceptual master plan. This will open the plan detail card. Due to rapid growth and development interest, the city has annexed several tracks for development. These tracks are zoned as planned development districts and conceptual master plans have been created for each. On the plan details card, you can scroll through the different scenarios and see the massing associated with each of the development phases. To edit the plan, select the options button in the plan details card and select edit. To the left of the view is the scenario selector. This allows you to choose which scenario is active. There can be multiple scenarios for each plan. Utilising scenarios, the city can explore and communicate the impact of proposed developments here and also create alternative options for the plan area. To the right you'll see zoning. Here you'll have access to zoning and overlays. Zoning allows you to see zoning boundaries and zoning envelopes. With overlays, you can add additional controls for things like height or a special use district. Under development, you'll see develop, space use, and capacity. When I'm in the develop mode, I can view and edit parcels. Parcels allow us to see parcels themselves, existing buildings, and future buildings. When you select a parcel, you can see information about that parcel. You can see building regulation parameters, parcel information, and building information. You can also see indicator information. This allows you to manage the existing and target indicators, and these indicators can be configured for each parcel individually. Under space use, you can see information about the space use type for a particular building. Here you can see the total new floor area that's being created by this scenario. Under residential single family, you can see a breakdown of the assumptions for that space use type. These assumptions are used to calculate the capacity indicators. The dashboards allow us to estimate the growth capacity of a development. When developing scenarios, it's helpful to know the indicators for the existing condition. And if there are design targets for the plan, it's useful to add those as well. This information is usually stored on the parcel to better understand how things may redevelop. We'll explore how to add this information in an upcoming tutorial. These modes also control what you're working on in the plan. For example, in development mode, I can select parcels to interact with. When I'm in zoning mode, I'll be selecting the zone areas. The editing tools are also controlled by which mode you're in. If I'm working with zones, I'll have tools that are specifically designed to work with that type of data. If I'm working with parcels, I'll have additional tools. You can collapse the side panels at any time by using the arrows. To return to the overview, click the menu button, click overview, and select the X to clear the currently selected plan. In the next video, we'll continue working with Hardyville to author a Greenfield plan to support the city's planning goals.